Want to learn about stocks, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and the metaverse? Join richtv.io. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, many time guest, the CEO of Vox Royalty Corp, Kyle Floyd. How are you doing today, Kyle? Rich, fantastic. I won't say Happy New Year, but uh, you know the year for Vox is off to a flying start, and uh, it's good to be back with you. Yeah, great to have you back on the show. Love having you on the show. And gold is off to a great start here in 2023. Can you tell us a little bit about your most recent developments and any exploration updates that Vox Royalty has had? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, we had a really big event for the company a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we were honored to ring the bell at the NASDAQ. And that was you know, a really um, fun event for us to reflect on what's been almost a 10-year journey for this company of producing shareholder value. And so a fantastic milestone for our business, something you know I've been on the show with you talking about that we were going to achieve the NASDAQ listing. And I think that really portends well for further and, and future liquidity in our stock, which is important, um, and especially the notoriety that comes with the NASDAQ listing. So that was a really uh, just a fantastic event for our team, our business, and our shareholders. In terms of some of the real juicy fundamentals that we have brewing, you mentioned higher commodity prices. We have exceptionally quality exposure to gold, to iron ore, uh, copper is in the portfolio. We're seeing really broad-based support for commodities. And I think we present as one of the most unique opportunities for exposure in the right ways to those commodities. And so this upswelling in value in the commodity sector, uh, especially around hard rock mining materials, is really significant for our company. So as you noted, commodities doing well, huge buoyancy that provides to our business and the value that we're creating. We had two uh, development stage gold opportunities that have now moved into production and one that's moved into construction. So that would be our uh, Boolong royalty is fast progressing and has appointed a mining contractor. Auto Bore has commenced mining that's operated by Northern Star. And then Mount Ida, this is a royalty we bought from a hearing aid company, uh, has announced that they're in construction and expect to be in production this year in 2023. So our seven producing asset count is expected to grow. And then one of our, our very significant assets is the Bowden Silver Project, which is the largest primary silver deposit that's developing in all of Australia. Um, they've received some positive permitting guidance. So really kind of across all facets of our business within the portfolio, we're seeing just a very positive dynamic uh, that's increasing the value of these particular assets. So really a lot of fantastic uh, you know, developments within the portfolio, what we call our organic growth, driving value for our shareholders. Congratulations on ringing the bell at the NASDAQ. That must have been super exciting. And I know it's very exciting for investors. And as an investor who's looking at a royalty company like Vox Royalty versus a mining company, what would you say are the most important factors when considering making an investment? Well, first off, I'll say I like the dynamics for you know quality companies right now, either that are the miners uh, or royalty companies like Vox. But I think when you're trying to really distill what separates a, a royalty company like Vox from some of the mining, the direct mining investment opportunities that are out there, you know, I really think it's just, it boils down to asymmetric return versus risk. We have a lot less risk. We have seven producing assets. To get exposure to a company that has seven producing assets in the mining sector would usually mean that you're investing in a multi-billion dollar, $20 billion type market cap business. So you're getting large cap, diversification with small cap torque within a, a much smaller company. Um, we have seven producing assets that are growing. Our revenue growth from 2021 to 2022 to what we expect to happen in 2023 is very significant. And then you also get the benefit of really costless, uh, costless upside in the fact that we had approximately 200,000 meters drilled on our royalty link tenure last year, of which we paid nothing for. So you're getting a tremendous amount of upside, a tremendous amount of growth, and a lot of fundamental growth within that, growing revenues, growing cash flow, a dividend that's, that's been announced and is also expected to grow over the medium and long term. And so I think it's just that asymmetric risk and return. We have a lot less risk, in our opinion, and we have a lot more return upside in front of us. And fundamentally, when you look at Vox, we're trading a significant discount to our peers. So you know, I struggle to find a, an analogy or, or a comparable company that, that has these types of dynamics working in its favor for our investors. 
I agree 100%. And with 2023 just getting started, what are the top three things investors should keep an eye out for with Vox Royalty? Yeah, we touched on a few of them. Really, we've had tremendous revenue growth from 2021 to 2022 and what's expected in 2023. On per share basis, I believe that we've led the industry by a very wide margin in that respect. We have put a dividend in place. I've always said I expect that to be growing over the medium and long term. Uh, and then we have a widening discount in terms of our relative valuation versus our peers. Uh, I do not think the market is really reflecting in our, in our valuation the type of fundamental growth that we've realized and what that ultimately means to the valuation of our business. And then if I was going to say, you know, one more thing that I think investors should be looking at is we have approximately 100 million gold equivalent ounces covered under our royalty uh, universe. And that's a tremendous amount of upside. And that 200,000 meters of drilling that happens is one, increasing that and de-risking that at the same time. So I believe that we packed just as much fundamental growth as any business out there with a lot of optionality. And uh, it's just not being reflected, in my opinion, right now in our share price and in our market valuation. I agree with you. And Kyle, can you tell us again, for everyone watching today, how many companies in your portfolio and how many different jurisdictions do you guys cover? So we have 62 royalty assets in our portfolio. We operate in eight separate countries. And across those 62 royalties, that's across 50 different operating companies. And many of the royalties that we have is the flagship asset for those operators. So it's a tremendous amount of diversification. And then the, the, the other kind of exposure that I really like within our portfolio is 70% of our net asset value is tied to projects in Australia, Canada, or the US. So again, I just believe that we have this asymmetric return versus risk equation that's working well in the favor of our business and our shareholders. And it's not reflected yet. I believe that's going to change in this calendar year. So one of the key questions that a lot of investors always ask about companies, does Vox Royalty need to raise any funds in the near future? Or do you feel you have enough cash on hand to be able to get the goals you want accomplished for 2023? Yeah, Rich, we're in a really unique position, which is our revenues are growing. Our cash flow is growing. We're positive cash flow. We're obviously paying that dividend. Um, and so we don't need to raise cash. We are in a great position where our balance sheet is growing stronger. The dynamics of our business and the fundamentals of our business are growing stronger every single day. So we don't need to raise cash. We also have a significant amount of opportunities out there in terms of if we wanted to take on debt and, and do some creative things with strategic partnerships. So the only situation that I have us raising equity is for a really accretive opportunity. But right now, no plans to raise equity. Um, the strength of the balance sheet, I think, is something worth noting. We don't have debt. A lot of our peers have debt and, and very costly debt. And so when you look at what's happening fundamentally, the growth of our business, you know, that's allowing us a lot more flexibility in terms of how we, you know, what levers we start to pull and how we could help, um, you know, really the valuation that uh, I think is at a tremendous discount to our peers come back in line. And so I'm excited to uh, really let our balance sheet strength speak in 2023. And Kyle, is there anything else that you would want shareholders to know about Vox Royalty Corp? It's our first interview of 2023. Anything that you can kind of let us know to expect or anything else you want to let investors know to look forward to? Well, it's a really interesting market to start 2023, Rich. And I think Vox is just, it's the right place. It's the right time. Um, yes, it, it appears, I mean, by all leading indicators that North America is heading into a recession. And I think Vox is uniquely positioned to realize growth margin expansion, return of capital to shareholders, uh, and a fundamentally discounted story. I believe we're trading under our intrinsic value. So for investors looking for how do I generate the right kind of exposure in this market climate, commodities are trading at, at fantastic levels. That's a huge positive dynamic to our underlying business and, and the fundamentals that we're producing. I expect that to continue for calendar year 2023 and likely beyond. And so if you're looking for a business that in this overall market dynamic is very, very strong, very well positioned. Um, I I would say really give Vox some very strong consideration. I think 2023 is the year that we really start to bridge the valuation gap between us and our peers. And, and ultimately, I believe, are worthy of a premium multiple in the sector, which would have us trading at a multiple of where we're trading. So I like where our business is for new investors. You know, everything we've touched on, asymmetric return versus the risk, um, growing fundamentals, growing revenue, growing cash flow. I, I expect also um, in the medium term, a growing dividend. I think there's just a tremendous amount to like about our business. 
and you overlay that with a backdrop that is making it difficult on some companies out there, Vox is, is very well positioned. We love Vox here at Rich TV Live. Our entire community is watching all the time. I want to bring your attention to the symbols, VOX in Canada, VOXR in America. Put on your radar, put on your watch list. I must remind you that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, we believe this is a company that is undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. They are now paying a dividend. They've been listed on the NASDAQ. And I think everyone should be aware of Vox Royalty Corp. Thank you for joining us today. The CEO of Vox Royalty Corp, Kyle Floyd. And Kyle, we'd love to invite you back anytime you have big breaking news or anything you want to discuss here on Rich TV Live. It would be my privilege. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, Rich. Keep up the great work. Kyle Floyd, the CEO of Vox Royalty Corp. And for those of you guys that are not winning, probably not watching, we bring in the winners, we bring in the news, CEO interviews, and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching, everybody. Put Vox Royalty Corp on your radar and watch list. This is Rich from Rich TV Live with Kyle Floyd saying, have a great day. We'll see you soon.